Welcome to RealFixesRealFast.com. A Taurus is one of the most popular cars out there. There's millions of them, and we get lots of requests for repairs on Tauruses. So today we've got a brake issue on this one. It needs rear calipers. So we're going to change the brake pads, turn the rotors, and replace the calipers. Of course, when we replace the calipers, we're going to have to bleed the system. So we're also going to show you a new tool called the pedal pumper, which is a quick and easy way to bleed the brakes. It's got a unique emergency brake system with it. So we're going to go in a little bit in detail and how you would work on that, even though we're going to replace this, we'll give you some information in case you were going to not replace it. This particular type of caliper has a unique method of attaching emergency brake cable in the back of it, and the pistons in these don't collapse like most front wheel uh, drive pistons do. These, you screw them in and turn them with a little bit of pressure with a special tool. This is a tool that's designed to put pressure as well as twist on the piston for this caliper. This tool has interchangeable heads on it. The heads have different depths or widths between these pegs, depending on the vehicle you're working on, which one you'll need. You set this in there, you line these pegs up with the slots that are in this piston. When you get that done, you back this collar off. This particular unit, because it's got the emergency brake unit in it, has got a spiral to the inside of it. it requires this piston to be twisted as it is compressed. And as you can see, as I turn it again, it's got clearance again, so we have to adjust this up and take that clearance out. Sometimes with uh, parts that's been on some of these vehicles and rock salt and various things, they can be a little bit stubborn, so sometimes a little PV blaster helps loosen things up. You want to put you a drain pan below it so that you catch that brake fluid and don't make too big a mess. Should be a washer. Often there'll be a brass or copper on this side and then one on the other side also up in here. This emergency brake cable has got a clip up in here we'll need to remove. Often these are called an E-clip, because if you look at this, it forms a, somewhat of an E. As you can see, that can be very uh, difficult to get in place. This cable goes up through that eyelet, and then this hooks underneath this arm, and it's just a process of wrestling it till you get it done. A lot of times you'll see these star clips on here. It's a pretty good indication that this rotor's never been off of this vehicle, because most people don't use those as a replacement. But one of the methods to getting off of is to get a hold of it with side cutters, get a hold of one of the tangs and stretch it, <coughs> and most of the time you don't even put these back on. These star clips are put on at the factory to hold that rotor in place while they're assembling it. Next thing you gotta do is take the caliper holder off. There's generally two bolts coming from the back and quite often they are very tight 
a lot of times you have to use a breaker bar to break them loose and then you can use an air ratchet after that a lot of times. That way you'll be able to take the rotor off if it needs to be turned or replaced. In this case we're going to try to turn this one. Now this is the new caliper and it's going to come up with a package of new slides. But we have to reuse the old bracket. Now those slides, when I put this in the vise, those slides are right here. If you were reusing the slides, you just put some grease in there, but they should slide in nice and good. But this one over here is stuck. So since we have to use, reuse the bracket, we've got to get this out. Now as you see when you pull this out, you've got this boot here. So I'm going to put that back on and that boot goes around that edge. But this one that's stuck, I'm going to pry the boot back and when you look in there you can see that it's all rusty. So I'm going to take a little PB blaster and spray that in there. Now we just have to work it back and forth. There's various tools you can use. I just happen to use a pipe wrench. Just use it back and forth. Put a little more PV blaster in there. So as you can see from this good one, it actually ought to spring in there. This rubber boot makes it spring, but this one's not. We've got it turned. Tap it with a hammer a little bit. And then just keep turning. After you get it worked loose, then you can pull it out. Take the boot off of it. And you can see all the rust build up on it. What I like to do is put it on the wire brush to clean this up. So now we got it off the wire wheel. You can see that it still slides in there. Now the next thing you need to do is put some of this brake lube on it. You just simply smear it around like that. And it should work in and out. Put the boot back on it. And then it works back in. That's so that the caliper can float. Now this is if you were going to take the caliper off, take the bracket off so you could take the rotor out and turn it. Now in our case, since we're replacing the calipers, it's going to come with new pins. Now we still would have to get it out of there, but you wouldn't, if you're using new pins, then you don't have to actually clean this like we did. When you get the new caliper, you'll want to line them up with the old one and make sure that they look like the match that you need, as long as it matches up. One of the things you're going to want to do, make sure that these notches are straight up and down, not twisted side to side, because a lot of times the brake pad will have knobs on the back of them and they'll need to line up with those. You want to take your old pad and match it up against the new one to make sure the basic length and width and style is similar. And here is the dimple that I was making reference to that you will want to put into this caliper is the reason that you want this notch 
and this notch to line up. This will actually go this way. But that would end up with this notch and that notch mating. You want to get a hold of this cable and you'll want to pull it out. Get all the length you can. Run the cable up through the eyelet. Put the clip on it. Install the E-clip back down in that groove. Make sure the head of this goes back up into that groove. Sometimes if these brass washers are really being difficult, you'll have to get a hold of them with a pair of vice grips and actually unscrew them off of here if they're that tight. You can see the one closer to the head is actually loose enough, it'll come right off. You should get new ones in a kit that comes with the caliper. Sometimes it'll come in a package, and that package will have, depending on the kit you get, sometimes it'll have the pins, the boots, and the caliper bolts for later. So you'll put one of the copper seals on the bolt, put the bolt through the block, the block has two different sides. One side's got a shoulder on it. The other side is flat. The shouldered side is the side that the bolt head goes to. And you'll take and put another copper washer on it. And you'll feed that into the threaded hole. It's got a block along here. There's an alignment tab. Helps to hold that in place when you get ready to tighten it down so it don't keep spinning. In this case, we're using the rotors that were removed. The rotors have been turned. This caliper holder has previously been pin removed from it, made sure the pin slid in it good. But in this case, we're going to use new pins that came with the kit with new boots on it. So as you put this in, it'll come in from the back of the rotor. The rotor has to go on first. I always run my bolts up in with an air ratchet because it takes less time, but I always check them by hand. You'll have the new brake pads. They'll come with a spring clip on the back. They'll set in place with the clips, the, the pad in, metal out, the clips on the back side. We're going to put new boots on these. You want to make sure that these ears on these spring loaders are in the right place because they go back against the caliper and hold them pads in place. You want to push in on these rubbers, line them up with the holes. You just take a little bit of that, <clears throat> smear it on this pin. That way you know the pin's been greased. Grease this pin up good, put it up through the boot, slide it in place. There are square notches on each side of these pins and the other sides are rounded. The square notches will line up with this square notch so that that will slide in place. I'm going to tighten these down, get them good and snug. I usually try to go back and forth on them a couple times after I get them in just to make sure I got the torque just right. 
We've just replaced the rear calipers, turned the rotors, put new pads on this Taurus. Here at RealFixesRealFast.com, we have a tool called a pedal pumper that will help us with that procedure. Honey, look at this. <laughs>